the manhwa begins in an apocalyptic world where Lu Xiaoma is in a large tower surrounded by zombies. Lu Xiaoma curses the world he is in and blows up the zombies. At that moment, the time travel system begins, and Lu Xiaoma is taken back in time to a point before the apocalyptic end had occurred, but he can only stay in the past for 10 minutes. Upon returning to the past, Lu Xiaoma approaches a store and sees a fat man robbing the store and harassing the cashier. Lu Xiaoma enters the store, blows up the door, and puts the fat man in his place. He then asks the cashier where the warehouse is, and she, attracted to Lu Xiaoma, tells him where it is. Lu Xiaoma then tells her that he hopes to see her again in the future if he survives, leaving the girl confused. Lu Xiaoma runs to the store's warehouse and, with the help of future technology, takes everything he can. After this, Lu Xiaoma returns to the present in the city of Fallen Leaf City where the girl he had saved in the past was about to be abused by two men. Lu Xiaoma finds them and says that this sounds familiar. The men realize that Lu Xiaoma has the mark of the awakened and become scared. Lu Xiaoma kills the two sickos and saves the girl. The girl recognizes him, and Lu Xiaoma tells her that he will help her get to safety. She asks him to please save her boyfriend too, as they are being chased by the Axe Gang for having a debt with them. Lu Xiaoma tells her that her boyfriend probably sold her, but she says that would be impossible. The Axe Gang then appears with the girl's boyfriend, whose name is Wang Ting. The boyfriend tells her that he only saved and fell in love with her to sell her later, as she is a virgin and worth more. He says he sold her to the gang for a loaf of bread. The gang leader plans to abuse her, but Lu Xiaoma says he promised to save her and activates his awakened mark. The gang leader is also an awakened of level 1 and can use the ability of stone skin. He gets angry and plans to attack Lu Xiaoma. Wang Ting gets scared and tells Lu Xiaoma not to risk his life. Lu Xiaoma looks at her and says, I, Lu Zaimo, am the only one who will keep his promises in this destroyed and corrupted world. Lu Xiaoma and the gang leader face off, and Lu Xiaoma emerges victorious, also killing the other members of the gang. Wang Ting decides to spare her boyfriend's life, but Lu Xiaoma attacks him and leaves him severely injured. He doesn't kill him right away but instead leaves him with a lingering energy to finish the job later, fearing that he may seek revenge. Later on, we discover that Lu Xiaoma is an awakened level 2 and that the research institution is hiding many things, making the apocalyptic world even more intriguing. Afterwards, Lu Xiaoma starts to leave because he only wanted to save her, not take her with him. However, Wang Ting asks him to take her with him, saying that she has nothing to offer him except for her virginity. But Lu Xiaoma refuses. Seeing that she has no other options, Lu Xiaomo reluctantly agrees and takes her with him. They travel to a place where there are no zombies, but it's a very shady place. The girls there sell their bodies for food, and people fight over even a small piece of food. It's a hell for the poor and a paradise for the rich. Lu Xiaomo and the girl head to an auction house, and upon arrival, Lu Xiaomo asks the waitresses to take him to where the auction is being held. However, they mock him for being a poor and weak mercenary and think he's going to sell Wang Ting. But Lu Xiaoma pulls out three chocolates, and suddenly they become very friendly and seductive towards him, wanting him to choose them. However, Lu Xiaoma chooses another girl who is standing behind them. He tells Wang Ting to change her clothes, as she's now his girl, and she blushes. Meanwhile, they're auctioning off level 1 mutant zombies at the auction house, and Lu Xiaoma explains that they're being auctioned off because the material found in the mutant zombie's head can help people awaken. After the mutant zombie auction, they move on to the auction of an armored car built by the best mechanic in the city, Lord Turtle. It's being auctioned off for 1 million bullets, as bullets seem to be the currency in this post-apocalyptic world. The car is externally reinforced and can withstand an attack from a level 3 awakened, can carry up to 20 people, and is essentially a mobile fortress. The auction begins, and one gang offers 1.1 million bullets, while another offers 1.2 million bullets, and they start fighting over it. Suddenly, a man appears and offers 2 million bullets. This man is Lord Fire Monkey, the vice president of Fury, the second largest gang in the city, and everyone is afraid of him because he's an awakened level 2. At that moment, nobody else makes any more bids because this gang has destroyed others in the past for the same reason. However, Lu Xiaoma suddenly offers 3 million bullets, which angers Lord Fire Monkey. The two continue to raise the bid, and Lu Xiaoma offers 6 million bullets. At that point, Fire Monkey offers Lord Turtle the protection of Fury and he agrees to make a deal with him. However, Lu Xiaoma offers several inflatable dolls of various famous people from 2010 to the old man, who's a pervert, and he accepts the offer and gives the car to Lu Xiaoma. Lord Fire Monkey isn't happy and plans to kill Lu Xiaoma after the auction event. After the car auction, there is a new auction. It is an auction for a girl named Nancy Wu. This girl, besides being very beautiful and desired by men, has a great perceptual talent. When exploring, having her nearby can give a great advantage and reduce the number of casualties. Everyone wants to buy her. 
she herself wants to be auctioned for 10 million bullets and wants it to be someone who wants to destroy the Fury Gang. This is because the Fury Gang destroyed the gang she belonged to, the White Feather Gang, and Nancy was the only one who survived and no one knows how. Everyone was shocked and didn't want to offer anything because no one wants to attack the Fury Gang, let alone for someone else's revenge. At that moment, Wang Ting and Lu Xiaomo raise their hands and offer the minimum of 10 million that Nancy is asking for. This made Fire Monkey very angry, and he pulled out a gun. He shot at Lu Xiaoma, but Lu Xiaoma managed to dodge his shot and killed him from behind. At the same moment, Fire Monkey's men started shooting at Lu Xiaoma, but they were too slow for him. And he managed to dodge their bullets. Lu Xiaoma hit Fire Monkey's men but left them alive. Subsequently, Lu Xiaoma offers Nancy Wu to join him. Nancy tells him that she is aware that the Fury Gang is not easy to defeat. Wang Ting tries to convince her to also be Lu Xiaoma's girl. Nancy blushes and agrees to join them. Later on, Lu Xiaoma begins to hunt down members of the Fury Gang with Nancy's help, as she is like a human radar and can easily locate people. Nancy can perceive enemies from more than 100 kilometers away. The problem now is that the leader of the Fury Gang, who is also Fire Monkey's older brother, has offered a reward for Lu Xiaoma's head and he is now constantly being pursued. In addition, Wang Ting's ex-boyfriend apparently wants to see her to apologize for what he did, but she doesn't want to see him. Lu Xiaoma tells her that it's a great opportunity and that she should go see him, because that way he could get rid of him once and for all. Lu Xiaoma thinks that Wang Ting's ex is behind the reward. There is a scene change and now we see the headquarters of the Fury Gang, where the leader Rai, Fire Monkey's brother, is angry with his men because they can't find Lu Xiaoma. Suddenly, Wang Ting's ex appears. He tells them that he will meet with Lu Xiaoma and his ex-girlfriend and that this could be a fantastic opportunity for them to get revenge on Lu Xiaoma. The gang leader gives him five packages of noodles as a reward for giving him that information. Later on, Lu Xiaoma and Wang Ting meet with the ex-boyfriend. He apologizes to Wang Ting and asks her to be his girlfriend again. But she refuses. At that moment, the Fury Gang surrounds Lu Xiaoma. Wang Ting feels bad again because she was used by her ex and put Lu Xiaoma in danger again. The ex-boyfriend laughs and tells her that he knows her well, that she is weak, too kind, and useless. He also asks the gang leader to let him keep her, so he can prove her worth since he couldn't sell her as a virgin before. Wang Ting apologizes to Lu Xiaoma for putting him in danger again. But he tells her not to worry. The gang leader is ready to attack Lu Xiaoma and is very confident that they can kill him. But Lu Xiaoma smiles and tells them that he brought them a gift. Lu Xiaoma had set up bombs all around the area before they arrived. He then detonates the bombs and everyone dies except for the ex, who was near Lu Xiaoma and Wang Ting. After the explosion, the ex begs for his life again and asks Wang Ting to forgive him. Lu Xiaoma thinks about killing him, but Wang Ting tells him not to. She then stabs him herself and tells him go to hell. When Lu Xiaoma and Wang Ting were leaving, suddenly the leader of the Debris Fury Gang appeared. Apparently, he is a level 3 fire awakened and cannot die easily. He attacks Lu Xiaoma, but Nancy runs him over with the car that Lu Xiaoma won at the auction. They take advantage of this and escape because Rai won't die with that and will get up at any moment. After this, the Debris Fury Gang now also offers rewards for Nancy and Wang Ting. Next, Lu Xiaoma enters the city quickly, escaping from Rei, who is furious and while chasing Lu Xiaoma, runs over many people. Rei is accompanied by members of the Popa Dragon Gang and the Phantom Fire Gang, as they want the reward that Rei offers. Lu Xiaoma and the girls are surrounded because there are only alleys, so Lu Xiaoma decides to send missiles to the city gate to escape and ends up breaking it with the car. The city was protected by walls, and that's why there were no zombies, as they were held outside. At the moment Lu Xiaoma breaks the gate, the zombies start to enter the city and people start shooting at them. What's left of the Debris Fury Gang doesn't stop and follows Lu Xiaoma out of the city. After a while, Lu Xiaoma stops and takes out a piece of clothing full of human blood thinking to attract the zombies while they continue driving. Further ahead, the Debris Fury Gang catches up and surrounds them. Lu Xiaoma gets out of the car and starts smiling because his plan had worked. The members of the Debris Fury Gang are surrounded by a huge horde of zombies that surround the entire site. Ray orders his men to get in their cars and flee from that place, but Lu Xiaoma attacks Ray and doesn't let them escape. Lu Xiaoma starts fighting with Ray without fear of dying, as he only thinks of fulfilling the promise he made to Nancy, to completely destroy the Debris Fury Gang. The Band Fury begins to counterattack the zombies to defend themselves from them. Lu Xiaoma makes Nancy fire a missile filled with urine and covers the members of the Fury Band, so that the zombies do not attack the girls. Apparently, human urine can greatly increase the ferocity of zombies and since the Fury Band is covered in it, they are practically dead. 
Subsequently, the zombies become even more ferocious and crazy and attack the members of the Fury Band. They try to defend themselves, but they cannot and are devoured by the zombies. Ray sees all his companions and brothers die, and at that moment, Nancy asks him how it feels to lose all his companions. Enraged, Ray decides to attack Nancy, but Lu Xiaoma protects her, and they begin to fight again, but this time Ray is going all out. Ray is so strong that he can burn all the zombies around him, and Lu Xiaoma has the ability to create energy with the air. Ray has a great defense and manages to defend himself well against Lu Xiaoma, but Lu Xiaoma manages to make the flames on Ray's body disappear. For fire to exist, oxygen is necessary, and Lu Xiaoma isolated the oxygen in Ray's body with several blows. Thanks to this, Lu Xiaoma manages to kill Ray and Wang Ting is happy because Lu Xiaomo managed to win, while Nancy cries with joy because she was finally able to avenge her companions. Thanks to this victory, Lu Xiaomo manages to evolve to level 3 of Awakening. The zombies attack Lu Xiaomo, and he kills some of them and decides to leave. As he is leaving, a girl named Fei Fei throws a missile at him, but Nancy perceives the missile, and Lu Xiaomo takes care of detonating it in the air. Fei Fei thought she had finished him off, but he finds her. She tries to shoot him, but Lu Xiaomo creates a shield of air, and then he asks Fei Fei to join his group since he knows her, and she is one of the most famous bounty hunters in the city, and it is rumored that she can improve weapons. Therefore, Lu Xiaomo thinks it is a good idea to have her on his side, promising to give her good things since she is a fan of weapons and likes to use bazookas a lot. However, when Fei Fei hears Lu Xiaomo say he will give her good things, she misunderstands and thinks he means other good things. Due to this misunderstanding, Fei Fei calls him a pervert and Lu Xiaomo makes her understand that he is not interested in doing anything to her since he already has two companions whom he considers beautiful and has nothing to envy. Lu Xiaomo exchanges his evolutionary points for a fifth-generation rocket launcher, the M78 Dragon. After this, Nancy realizes that there are very few zombies around, which is a bit unusual, and they realize that something strange is happening. At that moment, a mutant zombie appears, the Blood Claw Zombie, which is very powerful and rare to find. The group is thinking of escaping, but Fei Fei thinks differently than the group and she wants to kill the mutant zombie with her bazooka since the crystal in its brain can be sold for a very high price. At that moment, Lu Xiaoma intervenes and shows Fei Fei his M78 Dragon rocket launcher. Just after that, Lu Xiaoma uses the rocket launcher to kill the mutant zombie, demonstrating its destructive power to Fei Fei. After witnessing the rocket launcher, Fei Fei gets too excited, changes her mind about the group, and decides to join Lu Xiaomo's group to be able to borrow the rocket launcher from time to time. Later, it gets dark, and the group decides to camp in a safe spot between the mountains. They decide to take turns sleeping so that someone is always watching the area in case something happens. Lu Xiaomo decides to watch from the car. While he's in the car, he thinks that since he already has a complete group, he can visit that mysterious institute he knows. Just as Lu Xiaomo is thinking about this, Nancy approaches the car and gets in. She closes the door and thanks Lu Xiaomo for taking care of the Fury Gang. Nancy wants to be with him and begins to undress. Lu Xiaomo blushes and thinks, but Wang Ting also appears and wants to enter the car. Just before Wang Ting enters the car, Lu Xiaomo makes Nancy hide behind the seat. Wang Ting enters the car with Lu Xiaomo to take advantage of the other girls who are sleeping. Lu Xiaomo blushes again, thinking that she also wants to do something with him, but she only came to ask for help to become awakened and be able to help the group. She tells Lu Xiaomo that she is willing to do it with him if he thinks about it so much. At that moment, Fei Fei appears, and Lu Xiaomo is completely stunned by the situation. Wang Ting quickly hides behind the seat. Fei Fei enters the car and has the brilliant idea of seducing Lu Xiaomo to get the dragon rocket launcher. Just then, Wang Ting sees Nancy, and they both come out of hiding. They all see each other's faces and decide to return to the campsite with much embarrassment over what happened. The next day, the group left the campsite in the car and during the trip they stopped to observe a massive crowd of people blocking a bridge with many zombies. Later, some people from the massacre gang appear and attack Wang Ting, but Lu Xiaomo manages to protect her. These 18 gang members intend to kill Lu Xiaomo and take the girls for themselves. The captain of the gang is also a level 2 wind awakened and uses arrows to attack. The captain decides to fight against Lu Xiaomo, but as expected, Lu Xiaomo ends up winning the fight and the captain of the gang ends up lying on the ground telling Lu Xiaomo that he could provide him with information. But it was all a trap to give a button to the gang leader. Just at that moment, Lu Xiaomo realizes this and cuts off the captain's hand just before he could press the button. The rest of the gang seeing the captain in that state decide to flee but Fei Fei kills them all using her bazooka. Lu Xiaomo intimidates the captain to extract information on how to cross the bridge, and he tells Lu Xiaomo that the massacre gang has sent around a thousand team members with more than 200 awakened, 
and they themselves attracted the zombies to block the bridge. He also reveals that their mission was to find humans to use as blood baits to attract more zombies. After this, the captain tries to escape, but Lu Xiaoma ends up killing him. Lu Xiaoma checks what the captain was carrying and finds a seed with an energy reaction inside him. This seed is an exploration seed that awakens in the cultivation system. The group decides to leave quickly. In a scene change, we see the camp of the massacre gang and their leader, Yi Feng, learns that the captain has died so he decides to search for the killer himself. Lu Xiaoma thinks of going to the city and recruiting more people for their group, but they are found by many members of the massacre gang. They launch a rocket at them, but Fei Fei destroys the rockets with her bazooka. However, Lu Xiaoma's group is attacked by several more rockets, but Lu Xiaoma uses his air energy shield to protect himself. Then, Lu Xiaoma decides to get off the car and leaves everything to Fei Fei as he left the dragon launcher in the car. So the girls escape without Lu Xiaoma, but the enemy cars decide to chase after the girls. However, the enemy cars were destroyed as they could not penetrate Lu Xiaoma's energy wall, even though he was already very tired. Yi Feng thinks of using his men to tire Lu Xiaoma even more, but Lu Xiaoma defeats them all quickly without being noticed. So Yi Feng asks Lu Xiaoma to consider working for him. Lu Xiaoma obviously refuses, so Yi Feng uses his technique called the World of Trees Comes. Suddenly, trees and bushes begin to grow from the bodies of his people as they all implanted seeds. Yi Feng laughs, and within the forest, the speed and strength of Lu Xiaoma are useless, so he thinks of finishing him off once and for all. But Lu Xiaoma encloses himself with Yi Feng in a field protected by his air energy, so his attacks will not harm Lu Xiaoma. And Lu Xiaoma ends up winning the fight. Yi Feng tells him that he sent many men to ambush the girls, but Lu Xiaoma is not worried at all since he knows that the dragon launcher is in the car, with which Fei Fei defeated the ambushers, which causes great joy to Fei Fei. Lu Xiaoma thinks of killing Yi Feng, but to prevent him from doing so, he tells him that the leaders of the massacre gang blocked the bridge, and also tells him that he saw the leader of the city meeting with the leader of the massacre gang. Just then, the girls appear and Yi Feng tries to kill Lu Xiaoma, but Lu Xiaoma stops him and finishes him off. In a scene change, it is already nighttime and we can see the headquarters of a faction of the massacre gang where many men were present and had captured some girls who belonged to a warrior gang. The leader of the camp was Yi Feng, but he was not present, so his men were not planning to do anything with the girls yet. Lu Xiaoma plans to take them down and infiltrates the camp using a zombie to distract them. While wandering around, Lu Xiaoma overhears that there is an assassin outside who will likely attack that night, as she is an enemy of the massacre gang. Yi Rui, the name of the assassin, plans to enter the camp to rescue her sister and the other girls who were captured with her sister, but the famous assassin also plans to attack the massacre gang. Meanwhile, Lu Xiaomao walked through the camp and when he heard a woman's voice, he coincidentally stumbled upon the tent where the prisoners were held. Qin Xian managed to cut the rope that bound her, and as Lu Xiaomao entered, Xian mistook him for a guard and tried to fight him. Despite denying being a guard, the stubborn Xian continued to resist, so Lu Xiaoma punished her with a few spanks. Just then, a superior from the massacre gang entered, and Lu Xiaoma explained that Xian had tried to escape by pretending to be one of the gangs. Lu Xiaoma then convinced the superior to take advantage of Xian since the leader seemed to be absent, but it was all a trap. Lu Xiaoma grabbed the superior, covered his mouth, and cut his throat. He released the girls and gave Xian a pistol. After that, we see Lu Xiaoma taking out all the guards around the campsite. During this, Lu Xiaoma realized that two men were already dead, so he suspected that he wasn't the only one who had infiltrated the camp. At that moment, the famous assassin Yi Rui appeared. Yi Rui demonstrated her great speed by grabbing Lu Xiaoma from behind without him noticing, but he was more than protected from any attack thanks to his ability with his air shield. Lu Xiaoma attacked the assassin, and when Yi Rui realized he was a powerful rival, she decided to leave. But before leaving, she left a little parting gift for Lu Xiaoma by throwing a grenade at him. He managed to dodge the grenade, but the explosion woke up all the massacre gang members. Due to what had happened, Lu Xiaoma decided to call Nancy to change plans since the girls had previously placed several dynamites in an area. Lu Xiaoma ran towards the area, killing many along the way. Fei Fei also killed many, and after that, the group fought for a while and managed to defeat them all. After the fight, we see that Xian and the girls manage to free themselves and ask Lu Xiaoma if they can accompany him, but he refuses. He says he will only allow the girls to follow him if he is the only leader. Then many beautiful girls enter, including their leader, Yi Rui, who is an evolved with stone skin. She came there to rescue her sister Xian and the other girls. After talking with Yi Rui and the other girls, Lu Xiaoma thinks and decides he wants them to join his team. At first, they refuse, but Lu Xiaoma tells them that he was able to defeat a part of the massacre gang and has a warehouse full of food of all kinds in his ring. 
the girls obviously accept since food is practically everything in this world. Altogether, they decide to camp at the base and the next morning, Lu Xiaoma decides to give the girls their first order, which is to eat. All the girls get too excited to eat rice, and then more dishes with cabbage and peppers are brought out. They all get excited eating as much as they can since they haven't eaten that in a long time. Everyone at the camp is more than happy and excited to be part of Lu Xiaomao's team. In a scene change, we can see Lu Xiaomao looking at the bridge, searching for a plan to defeat the lunatics who are blocking it. Lu Xiaomao decides that the best way is to send all the girls to fight against the zombies that are blocking the bridge. What Lu Xiaomao really wants is to see the abilities of everyone to see if they truly deserve to be in his team. There are around a thousand zombies and the leader Yi Rui sets the plan in motion and encourages all her brave sisters to fight against the zombies. The girls march in formation with their respective rifles and start attacking the zombies. They all shoot and group together according to Yi Rui's orders. After a few hours, the girls team was winning the fight against the zombies and had the advantage. However, just then, a giant mutant zombie appeared. This mutant was very powerful, so much so that it set many cars flying and even bullets barely did any damage to it. Fei Fei, upon seeing it, is happy and thinks that the best thing to do in that situation is to use her rocket launcher. But Lu Xiaomao does not allow it as it could destroy the bridge. Xian gets too scared upon seeing the mutant, but Yi Rui is ready to fight against the mutant zombie, as she is a stone awakened. They exchange blows, and after fighting for a while, Yi Rui ends up losing the fight. When the mutant zombie was about to kill her, Lu Xiaomao saves her, telling her that if they continue like this, the bridge will be destroyed. The mutant zombie throws a punch, but Lu Xiaomao manages to dodge it. Yi Rui tells him that the zombie is too powerful for them and that it would be best if everyone in the group retreats since they do not trust that Lu Xiaomao is as powerful or more powerful than the mutant zombie. However, just after that, Lu Xiaomao leaves them all speechless by managing to kill the mutant zombie. At that moment, Rui realizes the true distance between herself and Lu Xiaomao. She had thought that the only difference between them was the resources that Lu Xiaomao possessed. But in the end, it was not just that. Lu Xiaomao is simply much more powerful. After defeating the mutant zombie, Xian leads the girls' group and they manage to eliminate all the zombies that were blocking the bridge, finally being able to leave Fallen Leaf City to search for the research laboratory, which was responsible for sending Lu Xiaomao back in time. Yi Rui sadly approaches Lu Xiaomao to apologize for not being able to eliminate all the zombies on the bridge and for being a hindrance to him. She thinks that the best idea is to leave the group, but Lu Xiaomao makes her sign an official work contract so that they can stay together for 10 years. The other girls get excited when they read the contract, as it says that one of the benefits they will have is being able to eat meat once a month, as decided by Lu Xiaomao. After that, Lu Xiaomao's group decides to make their way towards the laboratory, killing many zombies along the way. After several days of traveling many kilometers, Lu Xiaomao decides to check his map to see how much distance is left. He mentions to the group that they are already close to Tiger Village and that after successfully passing through the village, they will finally be able to reach the famous laboratory. However, he also mentions that the downside is that there may be more than 10,000 zombies and dozens of mutant zombies in the village, which must be very powerful. They stop for a moment and then Xian runs towards the group to inform them that there is a group of more than 20,000 zombies not very far from the village and also many mutant zombies. Lu Xiaomao is quite surprised to hear Xian's report as there are many more zombies than he had previously calculated. But this will not stop him as he is determined to cross the village and pass through the pile of zombies. Yi Rui is shocked to hear this, she is so surprised that she raises her voice and accuses Lu Xiaomao that it is totally impossible to pass through the village since with so many zombies it would be practically suicide for everyone. Lu Xiaomao, upon hearing Yi Rui's accusation, becomes angry, as she is doubting him and questioning his decisions despite being the only leader of the group. Lu Xiaomao calms down a bit but is still angry with Yi Rui and tells her that it will be the last time he allows her to speak to him in that way. The other girls in the group plead with Lu Xiaomao not to do anything to Yi Rui. After this, Yi Rui calms down and Lu Xiaomao decides to give her a kind of blueprint so that they can re-equip the cars they already have, in order to modify them in such a way that they can pass and sweep through the multitudes of zombies in the tiger village. Lu Xiaomao also mentions that they will need an initial truck to use as bait. The other girls are scared when they hear Lu Xiaomao's plan, as they still think it's suicide. But then Yi Rui shuts them up and tells them that if they don't want to work as a team for Lu Xiaomao, then they can leave the team. Right after that, Xian volunteers to be the driver of the truck, but Yi Rui also wants to do the same, so they start arguing over who will be the driver. The argument lasts for a while, and then Lu Xiaomao calms them down, telling them that Xian will be the driver of the truck. Lu Xiaomao informs them that he will be on the roof clearing the way, and Yi Rui will be responsible for coordinating the combat. 
Then Lu Xiaomao communicates the entire plan to the rest of the girls since there are many of them and tells them that if they do not feel ready and determined, they can return peacefully back to Fallen Leaf City, and he can provide them with the necessary food and vehicles for the journey back. But the girls tell Lu Xiaomao that they are not afraid and will go all out against the zombies. So, in this way, since everyone is quite excited and prepared, they set the plan in motion, and Lu Xiaomao tells them that they will start rampaging through the zombies tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Everyone starts improving their vehicles. After finishing upgrading the vehicles, they decide to start a bonfire and make dinner. Nancy tells Lu Xiaomao that they were able to find a lot of things in the nearby stores. And there must be many more things in the rest of the city. Everyone decides to split up into groups to search for supplies around the city. While in a group with Lu Xiaomao, Wang Ting thanks him for everything he has done for her in the past, as she has grown to love him since the moment they met in that store. Just then, Fei Fei interrupts Wang Ting's words, and Wang Ting leaves embarrassed. Lu Xiaomao becomes thoughtful and tells himself that Wang Ting has been with him for a long time, and it might be time to commit to her. Afterwards, they search the store for useful supplies and find various types of food, including ham sausages, instant noodles, meat, cookies, and more. After that, all the girls gather all the supplies they found and leave the store. Wang Ting stays alone in the store and picks up the swimsuits that Lu Xiaomao found earlier and plans to use them to surprise him in the future at night. However, Xian finds Wang Ting with the swimsuits as they both had the same idea in mind, so they split the swimsuits from the box between them. After that, night falls and apparently everyone got a lot of supplies, which makes the group think that everyone in the city left as soon as the zombie apocalypse started. After that, Xian goes with the other girls and whispers in their ear as a secret that Lu Xiaomao has a fetish for underwear. Meanwhile, Wang Ting and Nancy prepare dinner, and what they will eat are macaroni with ham sausages. Just then, Lu Xiaomao arrives with a mysterious box and Fei Fei tells him that she hopes it's not underwear, but Lu Xiaomao tells her clearly that it's not. He found many bottles of wine that they can use to drink, and he also found more bottles of drinks that they can use to make Molotov cocktails. Later that same night, Xian goes to talk to Lu Xiaomao after drinking quite a bit and tells him that she's very grateful to him for saving her earlier. Lu Xiaomao doesn't want to answer her because he can tell she's already drunk. Then, Xian tells Lu Xiaomao that she wants to sleep with him. But just at that moment Yu Rui appears and gets upset with Xian for trying to seduce Lu Xiaomao. She tells Xian that it is not right to do that with the leader of the group. Xian defends herself by saying that she was just talking calmly with Lu Xiaomao. Yu Rui, seeing that her sister isn't interested in him, jumps on Lu Xiaomao because she also wants him for herself and she's also quite drunk. Yu Rui hugs Lu Xiaomao and tells him that she wants to sleep with him. But shortly after, she falls asleep. Xian decides it's best to take Yu Rui to her car. The next day, everyone gets ready to fight and makes a plan. Lu Xiaomao gives them some motivational words and encourages the girls, telling them not to let their guard down. After that, there's a scene change, and we see thousands of mutant zombies that look very powerful. We can also see the girls inside their cars and trucks at the front, mowing down hordes of zombies. Xian is driving at full speed plowing through the zombies, as her truck has been modified with cutting weapons on the outside and is also armored. After a while, we can see the other cars following behind the truck and everyone is more confident, but just then the mutant zombies appear. So, upon witnessing this, Lu Xiaomao decides to climb down from the roof he was on to fight against the mutant zombies, while the cars continue to move forward to ensure that no one gets left behind. Lu Xiaomao manages to clear a path, allowing Xian and the other girls to follow and take out the remaining zombies. However, a mutant zombie manages to knock down Xian, leaving her severely injured. Upon seeing this, the girls become more determined and continue to fight against the horde of zombies. Fei Fei decides to use her rocket launcher and manages to kill a large number of zombies, while everyone else continues to advance except for the truck where Xian is located. Lu Xiaomao stays behind to fight the mutant zombie that injured Xian, fueled with anger since someone important to his group was hurt. After fighting against the mutant, Lu Xiaomao decides to head towards the truck where Xian is badly injured and promises her that they will both make it out of the situation together. However, the situation is not looking good for them as they are completely surrounded by thousands of zombies in the middle of the road. Thinking about how bad the situation has become, the girls consider going back to search for Lu Xiaomao. However, Lu Xiaomao appears, badly injured and carrying Xian in his arms, surprising everyone by returning after being in such a dire situation. They question if he is truly human for being able to escape the swarm of zombies and rescue Qin Qian. All of them get emotional seeing that they managed to survive the complicated situation, and Wang Ting hugs Lu Xiaomao as she was afraid of losing him forever. 
After that, a girl named Inching appears, who was a medical student before the apocalypse. Yi Rui asks her to save and cure Shen as her condition is critical due to several glass pieces entering her body, causing hemorrhage. Inching says it is very difficult to save her as she does not have the necessary tools and medications to do so. Upon seeing this, Lu Xiaoma only says that Shen can only be saved by a miracle. Everyone starts to despair, especially Yi Rui, who is Shen's sister. That's when Lu Xiaoma decides to do something for Shen. Using a meteorite crystal, he takes her inside a tent to treat her alone and begins to use the energy of the crystal to give it to Qin Xian. But it's not enough to save her, so he decides to give her his own energy so that Xian's internal organs can regenerate. While Lu Xiaoma is trying to save Xian, the other girls hear strange noises coming from inside. And they all question whether he is really trying to save her or doing something else. Yi Rui was very worried about her sister's condition, but then Xian comes out completely recovered, and everyone thinks that because of the sounds and the way Xian shone as she came out of the tent, she and Lu Xiaoma had sex. Xian gets upset upon hearing that her sister Yi Rui believes she slept with Lu Xiaoma and tells her that it didn't happen, that he only gave her the energy from the meteorite crystal and his own energy to save her. Then Lu Xiaoma orders the girls to immediately leave the place and they all go to their vehicles. But just then Xian thanks him for saving her and Lu Xiaoma tells her that he did it because she is a very important team member, but she can save her thanks for when they are in a safer place. Later in a scene change, the group can be seen passing through Tiger Village. It's a beautiful day with fresh air. Apparently, there are no zombies nearby as they haven't smelled any blood so far. The girls are very happy and relieved to be in such a place, and they wonder how Lu Xiaoma managed to find such a place. Lu Xiaoma answers them and tells them that he was born and raised in that very village. Yi Rui asks Lu Xiaoma why they are there, and Lu Xiaoma tells her that the place is not far from their destination, the laboratories, but for now, it's better to take a break and send some of the girls to search the village for anything that might be useful. Yi Rui asks Lu Xiaoma if this place is safe, as there could be zombies anywhere, but Lu Xiaoma replies, telling her that he is more than sure that there is not a single zombie in this place since everyone who lived in that village turned into zombies, and he himself had to kill them all and bury them one by one with his own hands. After that, Yi Rui decides to enter a house but on the way she comes across some vegetables that are not rotten, so she questions whether there are really no people in that village. She thinks that someone had been living there not too long ago, as everything was very neat and tidy. While searching the house, she comes across a diary and realizes that it belonged to Lu Xiaoma. In the diary, Lu Xiaoma recounts everything he had to go through when the zombie apocalypse first began in his village. Yi Rui is completely shocked to see that many deaths were written in it. Just then, Lu Xiaoma appears and seems annoyed. He asks Yi Rui what she was looking at, and she tries to avoid it, but Lu Xiaoma quickly raises her hand to see that she was reading his diary. He asks if she had really read it, and she replies that she didn't know it was his, feeling quite embarrassed. Lu Xiaoma gets angry when he hears that Yi Rui read his diary and asks her who gave her permission to read it. He even grabs her by the neck and almost chokes her. While all this is happening, Yi Rui is quite sorry and cannot stop apologizing to Lu Xiaoma, saying that she can hardly breathe. Eventually, Lu Xiaoma lets her fall to the ground and tells her to excuse him, as he lost his temper. Before leaving, Lu Xiaoma tells Yi Rui not to tell anyone else about what she read in the diary and about his past. After that, in a scene change, we can see Lu Xiaoma outside of the house on his way to visit his former deceased friends with whom he fought before everything happened. At that moment, he decides to burn his diary and says that he will do it in their honor. Just then, a girl named Chen Tong approaches Lu Xiaoma from behind and makes a small noise. Lu Xiaoma turns around angrily, asking who was following him, and we see that it's Chen Tong. She tells Lu Xiaoma that she saw him arrive completely alone in the mountains and got worried about him, so she decided to follow him all the way. She came to tell Lu Xiaoma how grateful she really was to him because these days had been the best, he had saved them and always gave them food. But Lu Xiaoma doesn't want to talk at that moment and tells her to talk when they return, which makes her think that Lu Xiaoma is not romantic at all, as she dressed up for the occasion and even wore an exclusive perfume for him. Suddenly a wild boar appears, and Lu Xiaoma manages to save Chen Tong's life. Lu Xiaoma tells her that she doesn't have to use any perfume when she comes to the mountain since mutant animals have a good sense of smell, and the scent of the perfume will stimulate them more than usual. After this, Lu Xiaoma orders Chen to find someone to carry the dead boar since they are going to have a party that same night. Then we can see that it's already nighttime and they prepare pork noodles, fish soup, cabbage soup, and steamed wild boar blood. Everyone is very excited and happy that Lu Xiaoma killed the wild boar in the mountains, otherwise they wouldn't be able to enjoy such a meal. Yi Rui approaches Lu Xiaoma to tell him that wild boar meat can be used to trade for many supplies in the city, 
and that they can't just eat it all. Lu Xiaomo replies by telling her that they all deserve it since they recently finished off many zombies and deserve such treatment. Then Lu Xiaomo retires to his room saying that he's going to sleep. After this, we can see Lu Xiaomo in his bed with seven bottles of alcohol, remembering all the people he lost when everything had just begun. He remembers his grandfather and grandmother, and wonders how they must be in heaven. Then he hears a girl telling him that she's going to enter the room. The girl enters and tells him that she can't sleep, that she wants to be with him. Lu Xiaomo tells her that she's in luck because he also can't sleep and suggests that she stay with him and drink alcohol. However, she tells him that she doesn't drink alcohol. Lu Xiaomo then takes her hand and puts it on his chest, telling her that drinking alcohol isn't a big deal. She's surprised by the situation and tells him that his arms feel warm around her skin. He then takes her and lays her on the bed, getting on top of her and telling her to take off her clothes. After that, they have sex. Two hours later, we see Lu Xiaomo smoking a cigarette next to the bed, wondering why he did it and reproaching himself for drinking. The girl gets up from the bed and hugs him from behind, asking if she's now his girlfriend or something similar. Lu Xiaomo gets up from the bed and tells her that it's too late for that and gives her a meteorite crystal to exchange for something in the city. The girl doesn't understand what's going on, and Lu Xiaomo apologizes, saying he's very sorry for what happened, and that he only did it because he was a little drunk. He tells her that he's not looking for a girlfriend at the moment and gave her the meteorite crystal as compensation. He also offers to give her more if it's not enough. The girl angrily gets up from the bed, takes the meteorite crystal and smashes it against the floor while yelling at Lu Xiaomo and questioning him about what's going on in his head, that she has never had a boyfriend until now. Lu Xiaomo tells her that he really can't have a girlfriend at the moment, that he simply got carried away by the moment and the alcohol. After that, he takes out three more meteorite crystals and tells her that they're all the crystals he's obtained so far, but that he can offer her something more if she wants. She gets angry and throws the crystals from his hand to the floor and then runs out of the room disappointed and sad, saying that men are bad. She goes outside and questions why Lu Xiaomo did that to her if he really didn't want her to be his girlfriend. After that, she decides that she doesn't want to see him ever again and decides to leave. In that moment, two people are seen from afar looking and shouting at Chen Tong, telling her that she can't just leave like that. Chen Tong asks who's there and then another girl approaches, revealing herself to be in Qing, the medical student. Chen Tong asks if there were only one person there, as she was sure she saw two people in the distance, and Qing gets a bit nervous and says it must have been her imagination, as she was alone searching for a bathroom in the dark. Chen Tong insists that she really saw two people, a girl dressed in black with long hair, and Qing threatens her, telling her to admit that she saw nothing. At that moment, the killer that Chen Tong was talking about appears right behind her. The killer tells them that if Chen Tong saw her, then she's dead, and proceeds to kill Chen Tong. The next morning, we see Rui running towards Lu Xiaomo to tell him that one of the girls is missing. Lu Xiaomo asks which girl is missing, and Rui tells him it's Chen Tong. At that moment, Lu Xiaomo wonders if it was because of everything that happened the night before that Chen Tong got upset and went missing. Rui tells Lu Xiaomo that in Qing saw Chen Tong escaping with tears in the night, saying she would return to the city of Luoye. Upon hearing this, Lu Xiaomo says it cannot be possible, as there are too many zombies. Yi Rui notices Lu Xiaomo's concern and nervousness and asks him why he suddenly became so nervous with the news of Chen Tong. However, Lu Xiaomo decides not to answer the question directly and tells her to stay where she is while he gets on a car to see if he can bring her back. But just as Lu Xiaomo is about to leave for the car, Yi Rui tells him it's too late for that, as Chen Tong drove a car last night. And she's most likely dozens of kilometers away from where they are. Upon hearing this, Lu Xiaomo becomes angry, thinking that Chen Tong was too childish to leave for something like this in an apocalyptic world. After the anger subsides, Yi Rui tells him that she is smart and capable enough to be safe if she wants to go back to Luoya, but the angry Lu Xiaomo tells her he doesn't care if she's safe or not, that he doesn't force anyone to stay with him, and that she can go wherever she wants. After that, he orders the whole group to gather to head to the top of the village mountain. After that, we can see the group on their way to the top of the mountain, where the research institute should be according to Lu Xiaomo's recollection. Just then, a suspicious fog appears near the group. Nancy warns Lu Xiaomo that she sensed a strange and very strong energy right in front of them, an energy that was completely different from that of the zombies. Lu Xiaomo tells them that there's nothing to be afraid of and orders Yi Rui and Nancy to go ahead and explore with him, while the other girls stay where they are and keep watch over the area. We then see Lu Xiaomo, Yi Rui, and Nancy exploring the mysterious fog. Lu Xiaomo asks Nancy if she can still sense the energy, and she tells him that the energy's location is diffuse and seems to be everywhere. Lu Xiaomo asks Yi Rui if she has found anything new, 
but as he turns around, he realizes that Yi Rui is no longer there, she simply vanished, and at that precise moment, Nancy also disappears as if by magic. Lu Xiaoma then realizes that he is completely alone. In a scene change, we can see Yi Rui shouting for Lu Xiaoma and Nancy, but when she turns around, she sees a deer with red eyes. Later, we see Nancy in the same situation as Lu Xiaoma and Yi Rui, completely alone in the middle of the fog and has lost her senses due to the fog, and just like with Yi Rui, a deer with red eyes appears right behind her. The scene changes again and we see Lu Xiaoma alone in the middle of the fog. Lu Xiaoma mentions that the fog makes it difficult for him to see, hear, and even smell. Lu Xiaoma sets out to find out who caused the fog so that he can protect Yi Rui and Nancy. Just after that, a deer with red eyes appears to Lu Xiaoma as well. Lu Xiaoma is somewhat hypnotized by the deer, to the point that he drops his sword. The deer intended to attack, but Lu Xiaoma becomes conscious again and manages to grab its horns. Lu Xiaoma sees that it's a mutant deer and kills it, but killing the deer doesn't clear the fog. So, he decides to use his wind power to find Nancy. She was also hypnotized, but Lu Xiaoma manages to save her and kills the deer that was with her. After that, he also worries about Yi Rui but she later appears carrying the dead deer on her shoulder and is happy because they can now eat meat again. Lu Xiaoma congratulates her, and just after that, the fog clears. After that, the group manages to reach the top of the mountain and see the city, but most importantly, they see the mysterious institute that was responsible for Lu Xiaoma's time travel 10 minutes into the past. Lu Xiaoma sets out to find out what's happening with that institute, but they are completely surrounded by an excessive number of zombies. Lu Xiaoma calls his entire group to attack the tower so that he can enter it at all costs. Fei Fei uses her dragon rocket launcher to attack, and the other girls also start attacking the zombies from modified cars. Lu Xiaoma also fights against the zombies, and they manage to reach the tower. The girls decide to stay outside the tower to protect those inside. Lu Xiaoma manages to enter the tower along with Wang Ting, Nancy, and Fei Fei. Upon entering the tower, Lu Xiaoma observes a huge celestial meteorite crystal. He feels some kind of connection between the giant meteorite crystal and himself, so he decides to approach it and touch it. Upon doing so, Lu Xiaoma disappears, and we realize that he is now inside the crystal. Just at that moment, a girl's voice is heard telling Lu Xiaoma that she had finally arrived, that she had been waiting for him. Lu Xiaoma asks who she is, and the girl's voice tells him that many people have called her Gaia, or Ochi, or Hong Jun, but that she prefers to be called the Will of the Earth, and that she was the one who sent Lu Xiaoma back ten minutes before the apocalypse. Lu Xiaoma asks her why him, what his purpose is. She replies that the zombies caused the earth to fall day by day, and that her purpose is to destroy all of them so that the order can be restored on earth. She also mentions that she sent many other people back in time for 10 minutes, just like him. However, Lu Xiaoma is the only one who is still alive. So she entrusts Lu Xiaoma to travel through time again, specifically just before the apocalypse and stop the spread of the zombie virus. But this time it will be different from the last time. This time he will not travel to the past for only 10 minutes, but he will travel to the past until he accomplishes his goal. Lu Xiaoma is worried about his group of girls but she tells him that he can protect them while he stops the spread of the virus, so in this way the story will change and there will never be a post-apocalyptic world like the one they are currently living in, but if he fails in his mission, his power will disappear little by little, and everything depends on Lu Xiaoma and his ability to accomplish his goal. Right after that, a kind of celestial sphere appears in front of Lu Xiaoma, and she tells him that the decision is his, that as soon as he touches that sphere, he will travel back to the past. Just before the apocalypse, Lu Xiaoma says that he wants to change absolutely everything and decides to touch the sphere to travel to the past and change history. While he is traveling to the past, Lu Xiaoma promises the girls that he will change everything and promises them that they will be able to live a better life. Then we can see the world before the apocalypse, we see the same store from the beginning and we can observe Wang Ting in the past worried because Lu Xiaoma saved her and left as if nothing had happened, and she would really like to know the name of Lu Xiaoma. At that moment, Lu Xiaoma opens the door and tells her that his name is Lu Xiaomi, she is happy to see that he is back and asks where he had gone, he simply tells her that it was all a nightmare and not to dwell on it too much. Right after that, Lu Xiaoma takes Wang Ting's hand and tells her to leave that place, she surprisedly asks where they will go, to which Lu Xiaoma replies, to save the world. 